Hey folks, welcome. This is Max. Welcome to another workflows video. So today I'm going to build a flow that um, helps find an active Okta users. So these folks are still sort of active, but they haven't logged in into the system for X number of days. <clears throat> and we can define those number of days. So this is helpful if, for example, they have licenses for some um, uh, software that they're not using, and then you can identify them, for example, and um, you know maybe just you know cancel their licenses, for example, <clears throat> or, or just in general, you want to know, hey, these these people haven't logged in for some reason, and uh, you know you can sort of do something, whatever you decide to do. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and do that. So this is, um, I've got these two flows that we're, we're going to build. I have the just in case if I uh, need to use it as a cheat sheet. So, but hopefully I won't need to. All right, so first we're gonna actually build two flows. Uh, first, we're gonna get all the active users and then pass them into helper flow where we're gonna check when was the last time they logged in. And then we're gonna pass in the number of days we think uh, we should check. So. You can do 30 days, you can do 60 days, you can do one day, it's sort of uh, up to you. So first, we're gonna, first flow is going to get all the users, active users, and then second, we'll check the date. And also at the end, we're actually gonna save those users who um, haven't signed in for longer than X number of days into a table. All right, so let's create a new flow. And then we're gonna call this, um, I guess we can call this get users. And if we want, we can just do a description. We want to click here, right? So this will help us as we uh, test the flow. Now here um, we will do is, we actually we'll do a schedule now. Uh, so for example, you can run this every week, uh, but we're gonna of course test, test this sort of manually, but let's say you can run this every week uh, on Monday at 9 a.m. you know Pacific time. Okay. And now this uh, next card will be uh, let's find the user. So we're gonna this is going to be in action because we're gonna be using the Octa connector. And now we're gonna search for the action. Now list users with search. Now so right here actually we're gonna be using streaming, but um, if I do streaming, let me just show you quickly. What happens is that it will ask me, I, I can't save this flow. Uh, it's gonna ask me for helper flow, which uh, I'm gonna create in just a second. So what I usually do sometimes, and this is kind of a handy, is that you can switch to this option. Uh, and this will allow you to test this card. And we're gonna need this. And then we're gonna look for active people. And then we can test this just to see how many people we have. And I think I should have four people. Yes, so I have four users who are active um, in my organization, okay? So again, we're gonna switch to streaming, but for now, we can leave this as is. All right, um, so we're gonna come back to this flow. Let's click here and let's create a helper flow. And we're gonna check, must log in. Then same here. Now we need this helper flow. And so we're going to make this a, use this event. And now we're going to define the input. So first one is record. And this is going to be of type object. And then going to be three um, sort of variables. First one is ID. This one is going to be login, which is usually the email. And the, um, and this one is going to be last login. And this is going to be a date. And then one more thing, so this is called uh, state, and this is also an object. And this allows us to pass any additional information to the helper flow. So that's how we're gonna pass the uh, number of uh, days. And we're gonna call this time window, for example, all right? So this is the helper flow, or I should say the input to helper flow. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is let's just check to make sure that last login is actually even set. Now, perhaps this person never logged in, so we don't need to continue at all. 
So we're going to use add function, and then we're going to use continue if, and this is a kind of if else type uh, card. And then we're going to take this, and we're going to say if it's not empty, then continue. Otherwise, we're going to set, set this message. So last again is empty. All right. So again. Um, if last login is not empty, we're going to continue. If last login is empty, then we're going to set this message and basically stop the flow. Now, one thing you can do here is you can actually test this already. And what I did is I created this little um, this JSON, which basically matches this structure right here. And then we can test. Oh, sorry. I, I just need this first. All right, and for the time window, so we're going to use 30 days. And notice right here, save input. So if you um, run this again, you won't need to uh, enter it again. So run test. Okay, and so this works because the last login is uh, March 29th, and so we're fine. So it's set. Uh, which means messages now, so the flow would continue. Okay, um, now let's uh, go ahead. So now we're going to do is we're going to get today's date. We're going to say now, and this returns to the today date. You know, if you want to test this, you can, and you can see today's date. Now, also what's also handy is that you can um, rename this just to give it a little more and more context. Okay, uh, we got today's date. Now we're gonna say today's date minus the time period. So we're gonna see when is when is the cutoff date. So we're going to say um, subtract here and it's time and date. And then we're going to say now uh, minus this time window. And then we're going to make this to be uh, days. And also just let's rename this as well. So we're going to call this activity out of date. All right. So we can quickly test this again, same using the same data. We can see 30 days. So we need someone. Um, so this is May 28th. So anyone who signed in after May 28th is considered to be fine. Anyone who signed in before, then we want to record that user. OK. Um, next, what we're going to do is um, we got that. We're going to um, then do a difference. Um, and sorry, not a difference. We're going to do if else. Um, we're going to see if the cutoff date was um, before um, last login. So if the user signed in before or after the cutoff date. So that's what I'm going to do. So continue. And so we're going to say uh, last login. So notice you can drag it from here. But also what's handy, you can actually also drag it from here, right? It just creates, if the flow is long, this is very handy. Um, is less than, and then an activity cutoff date. Oops, here we go. So we're basically saying, hey, was the last login before May 28th or after? And if, if it was before, then we continue because we want to record the user. If not, we're going to say uh, last login within Activity uh, period, I guess, something like this. Okay. Um, so now we're going to continue, and let's also figure out how how many days. Um, what's the difference between last login and and today? Again, those are the users who um, who we found uh, haven't logged in. Logged in. So we're going to use difference, and then date and time here, and we're going to say today. All right, uh, minus last login. And it's going to give us like how many days that this user hasn't logged in. 
Um, we're going to get days here, uh, but it's going to be, you know, um, you know days. Um, it's not going to be a round number like an integer. So we're going to do round. All right. And we're going to be and have rounded. OK, so let's test this with the same uh, data that we have. All right. And so we can see, you can see 90, 2, 90 and 0.27. Uh, and so this person uh, hasn't logged in for 90 days, right? So this person, we need to record this person. So let's, um, we identify the person. And so let's record this person into our table. So I'm going to say, um, create, actually, let's go to tables and create row here. Now, choose table. I don't have a table, so let's actually create a new table. And let's give this a name, um, inactive users too. And then we're gonna create a few columns here. Uh, first one is user ID, and I'm gonna, you can create, uh, click create, but I'm gonna click add another. And then this is going to be login add another. This is a date checked, which is, you know, when this flow um, will run. And this is going to be a date. Uh, and then last login, this one is also going to be a date. And finally, we're going to say days since last login. Okay, so we got all the columns here. Now we can go back to then choose table and we're going to select. And we'll enable all this, all the inputs. And now let's see here. So this is the number of days we're going to apologize. That's not what I wanted to do, but uh, like this, then uh, last login like this uh, date checked. Um, that would be today, so we can do it this way. And then this information is coming all the way from the input to this helper flow. So what you can do is, um, instead of just kind of a dragging, uh, we can click this uh, pin and then move it like this. It stays in place, it's like a frozen card. And then take the ID here and take the login. Okay, and then we can unpin this. All right, so um we just need to go back here to this hour and then if you remember change this to streaming so again streaming instead of creating a list and then running through kind of a for each um, streaming is going to automatically send all the records to the helper flow okay and then now choose flow and this is the one okay one more thing we're going to do here is we're going to also clear the table so from any previous runs. Um, so clear table and then choose table. And save. One thing actually I'm forgetting um, is I need to pass the additional information. So this is going to, this was actually not run correctly. Um, here I forgot the time window. So it's important right here. And you want to give this exactly the same name. The time window has to match this variable. So let's give this 30 days. Right. And let's enable both. All right. And then get users. And let's give this a run. Um, oh, I think I clicked twice here. Um, you know, I think that when there's no input it actually runs automatically. So that's probably what happened, but let's go and see, uh, let's go to the helper flow and yeah, looks like it ran, uh, there are a few tests here looks like it ran but let's go to our table 
Uh, because we clear the table, we should still see just one run. Oh, I guess it's too interesting. All right. Well, it still it still works. Um, it still works. Let's um, let's do this. Let's delete all rows. And let's give this another run. Um, let's go here. Sorry, here. Um, get users. Let's do test. Okay. Yeah, it runs. It was just it just took a little bit longer, and I clicked the button, and it's taking run again. Um, so let's go to check class login. So here at twelve thirty one. Uh, we can see there are four runs because there are four users. And then if I go to table, yeah, so now it works. Now, so there is one user who um, signed in, you know, 30 days or, or before, right? Now, actually I actually have a few more users uh, that signed in a lot more recently. So if we go to get users and we change this to just one day, I should get, I think, two more users. Save this and let's test. Okay. And let's go to the table right away. Yeah. So we got two users who signed in more than you know seven days ago, and then one the same user signed in uh, 90 days before. We can go to our flow and take a peek to the helper flow and history. And then we can see the four runs here at 12.32. And uh, so we can see the seven days here. This is 90 days. This is seven days. And there is one user, which is myself. It actually stops uh, because uh, I signed in today. And so I don't count as an, an active user. Um, well, very cool. Um, that's uh, all I wanted to show you. And then this is just how to, you know, sort of identify inactive users in Okta. Um, and um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.